Hi everyone, we hope you're all having a very good week. You will recall some while back we had a visit to the Ironbridge Gorge. This was for Valentine's Day, our treat to ourselves. <laughs> and apart from what you've seen in previous videos, we also visited Blist's Hill Victorian Town, which is basically a reconstruction of an industrial town in the late 19th century. So what you're about to see is us wandering around the town. It's filmed very much on the hoof. Nothing is set up, we just sort of wander around, I'm filming. I've captioned many of the items you're going to see and I've gone into a little bit more explanation on some of them. Because it was February, it wasn't the main season or anything, and many of the working exhibits like steam engines and that sort of thing were not actually in action so you don't see anything like that moving but I hope it will give you a flavour of what they've tried to achieve there the site was established back in the 1960s and I will explain that at the start of the video so I just hope you enjoy watching Hi, and thanks for joining me. Blist's Hill, Victorian town, was founded in 1967, originally as Blist's Hill Open Air Museum, and represents a small industrial town in the period between 1890 and 1910. It was developed on a derelict industrial site of 20 hectares, about 50 acres, on land where iron ore was once smelted, coal and clay were mined, and where bricks and roofing tiles were made. It includes a length of the Shropshire Canal and the Hay Inclined Plain. It is part of the Ironbridge Gorge Museum Trust Limited, which cares for 36 scheduled monuments and listed buildings, and operates 10 museums within the Ironbridge Gorge World Heritage Site. Over the years, buildings due for demolition were dismantled and rebuilt on site, such as a toll house, school, doctor's house and surgery, and where whole buildings couldn't be saved, their fittings such as doors, windows and entire interiors were collected and incorporated into new structures such as the chemist shop and public house. Yeah, this is actually only a temporary affair because we actually have a proper Victorian marketplace built next to the bank. Dentist chair.
Hello. Lovely, isn't it? Ten to twelve years, perhaps. So she's starting to enter puberty. It's got some sort of bust and hip shaping, but a lot more of this cording. So it is fairly self-sufficient in standing up and giving the structure. So they thought children had soft bones who would grow crooked if they weren't given this support. So even babies wore a very soft version of a corset which was taped around their bodies. So by the time she's entering sort of adulthood, going out into society, this wow. is the final version. So this is the one with all the steels and whale bone structure in it, again cording under the bust and over the hip gauze. So she'd be tight laced into that to give her the support. Obviously her clothing wouldn't sort of fit properly if she wasn't corseted because the bodices were that close fitting to the body. And the embroidery at the bottom stops the bones basically just from poking out. <laughs> it reinforces that section. So the one over there has obviously got the feathers. This is a replica of the first steam locomotive in the world, built locally at Colebrookdale in 1802, to the design of Richard Previthick, a Cornish inventor and mining engineer. Sweetheart, have you seen the horse? The Maidley brick and tile works date from the 1870s and were used until just after the Second World War. demonstration is going on here but unfortunately we're on the outside and the demonstration is inside yep It is now, the sun's coming out. Yeah, we're all out till about three o'clock. Yes.
bellows in the corner. When we first arrived at the Baker's, it was closed unfortunately, but we weren't going to be put off, we went back later. Where the work happens. gone in here? No. No? no okay. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Just doing some filming. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely to see. I'm always interested in the scullery and the, the servants bits as it were. This is a doctor's surgery. Yeah. 
If you look at the name on the door, These are in situ remains that date from 1832. Other structures are dated from 1840, 1844 and 1873. The main structural ironwork came from Woolwich Dockyard's Anchor Forge building, which was designed by John Rennie and was acquired by the museum in 1974. We did try and get into the school but this happened. Hello. Sorry, we're close to the public. How are you? There was a visiting group of school children, so we walked on by. The beam engines, David and Samson, form a gigantic air blowing machine which served the furnaces at the Lills Hall's company's Prisley Iron Works between 1851 and 1900. They were moved the six miles to Bliss Hill in 1971. Until 1910, the Spry transported limestone from Chepstow quarries. By 1932, all of its rigging had been removed so it could be towed as a barge and it was eventually abandoned in the 1950s. It arrived at Blist's Hill on the 27th of March 1983 and restoration was completed in 1996. Built in 1888 of timber and corrugated metal sheet, 
the church was re-consecrated in June 1978 by the Bishop of Hereford. We decided to turn back, which is good, as we were on the wrong track anyway. Shelton Toll House was the very first building rescued and opened in 1973. It dates from 1829 and was designed by Thomas Telford, the Scottish civil engineer. Given how old it is, it was quite a luxurious property at the time and even had an internal toilet. And two bedrooms. It's even got a garden and outbuildings. We're just leaving Blist's Victorian town, had a good look around, rain was due in the afternoon, we got back to the camper, just about to set off and it started to rain. So we did all that in good time, need to watch where I'm going. We hope you enjoyed that look at uh, Blist's Hill Victorian town, we thoroughly enjoyed wandering around there. There is so much to see, we just never got to see all of it. There wasn't the time, because we had to get back. But, I'm going to start again. <laughs> it's hard work. Oh dear, it's, it's hard work doing this filming. <laughs> anyway, we hope you enjoyed that look at List Hill, Victorian town. We enjoyed our wander around. There is so much to see there. You can spend a whole day there and still not really appreciate it all. 
We haven't covered everything that is there. There's much more than I've shown you. If you do live locally, you may want to visit if you never have done. For those of you further away, I hope it's given you a good flavour of a reconstructed Victorian town. And it's places like this, of course, which are often used in filming. Filming television documentaries or programmes, which many people find of interest. And I certainly like to get out and about. And now Jasmine likes to come with me and see these sort of places. So that's it for this episode. Look after yourselves, your friends and families. Until next time, take the utmost care. If you haven't yet done so, please do think about subscribing and clicking that little bell as always. <laughs> I'm going to say bye for now. Take bye. care, everyone. Bye.